Hi everybody, it's Sarah Bryant here with the Bible Journaling Ministries creative team and today I am going to show you how to create a simple wave using paint. I'm going to use some watercolor as well as a little bit of acrylic as we journal in Jeremiah 33 3. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. So I have set out a few things here using the printable that I am going to use today and you can find this on the Bible Journaling Ministries store at BibleJournalingMinistries.com slash store and I am honored to have partnered with them to create this printable this time and it has some really nice images to depict diving deep into God's Word. And there's page two with your dex cards, of course, and page three with the larger images that you can use in your illustrating or larger Bibles. So again, you can find that printable, and that's the Jeremiah 33.3 Dive Deep printable at www.bibledrillingministries.com slash store if you would like to go check it out there. And so I have used some of those items here and I have just fussy cut those out and I am going to move those off of my page here so that I can get to work on my painting. And I wanted to do something simple today to really focus in on the scripture. In Jeremiah 33 3 let me read it to you here out of my illustrating Bible it says the Lord who made the earth the Lord who forms it to establish it the Lord is his name says this call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things that you do not know and this really speaks to me today because we are living in some very interesting times to say the least and there are just times when we just don't know what to do in so many situations and it's so wonderful and refreshing that God just clearly tells us in this verse call to me and I will show you great and difficult things which you don't know. So it just clearly says God will reveal things to you, answers to questions you may have about what should I do in this situation, or just things in general. If you're having issues, you're having questions about difficult things, that God will reveal things to you that you don't know anything about great and difficult things too not just uh, random things but incomprehensible things and as well as the printable I might be using some of these shiny stickers I like to use those quite a bit I've got a micron pen here and a highlighter and I also have some paint brushes of course I have just a regular pencil. I have a few different kinds of paint here. I have um, these are watercolor paints, all of these, and then I have also some white acrylic paint. And I also have a little bit of glue that I will probably be using as well. So, first, what I want to do here is take my pencil and I just want to kind of outline, oh, I also have my heat gun tool here that I'm going to be using to dry <clears throat> kind of in between my layers of paint here. I have not prepped my page. I'm really not a huge fan of page prep. I have some gesso and quite honestly I got it a while back and I have never even used it because I have found that as I have started to paint in my Bible, actually more than one of my Bibles, that my paint just really either lightly shadows or doesn't bleed through at all and so I just 
haven't really taken the time to do too much at all with gesso. So there's that side note. So let me go ahead and take my Micron pen here first and I think just underline my scripture here. Let's see. I like to highlight my verse that I am journaling. And sometimes I do that in more than one way. Sometimes I underline it, and then I highlight it later. Sometimes I just highlight it. Sometimes I just underline it. Sometimes I put washi tape over it if I'm going to paint around it. It just kind of depends. And you can highlight it or not highlight it. That's totally up to you. So now I want to just kind of lightly with my pencil draw the outline of how I want my wave to look. And I'm honestly not even sure really how I want it to look. So let's just kind of start here. And go like this. That's pretty good. And really the whole purpose is just to get kind of a basic idea of how you want your wave to look. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but you want to really more just have a guide. It doesn't have to be some amazing artwork here. And so I, I would suggest if you're going to do a wave or something similar that you use at least two different shades of either a blue or a green or things like that. In this particular watercolor set, you can use any watercolors you have. There's no rules there. There's a lot of really inexpensive and great ones. I have a Prussian blue, a jade green. This has periwinkle blue, although it looks a little more purpley to me, and this is a fern green, so I'm probably going to use all of those blues and greens there. And then I also have a different set here that has a really nice green and a really nice blue that I like also. And then I also have some samples of some paint that I was thinking of using, but I may not use those. So let's just go ahead and dig in here. And I'm going to start with my watercolor paints, and then I'm going to use my white acrylic paint last. So I'm going to start with just a Get this out of here. I'm going to start with just a kind of wide paintbrush. There's nothing special about my paintbrush. I got some paintbrushes. I think I got these off of Amazon. They're they're just a nice paintbrush. So, but you can use anything that you have or get them from anywhere that you like. So I am just going to start with the blue think. Let's see. And I'm just going to get some, I just want to get some paint on my page here. So let's just get quite a bit of water here and just kind of get it on my page about where my wave is. It doesn't have to be perfect yet again because you're going to put quite a bit of paint on this page so I just want to get it get it going here. And I am protecting my page here. This is the Day Spring uh, it's the Illustrating Bible page protector that goes with your Bible, but you can certainly use, you could use a piece of cardstock as far as that's concerned. You don't have to use something special. There's really no rules except for I just suggest that you put something under your page if you are painting to protect the pages that are behind your page so you don't get paint on those. 
That's just a good idea. You could use wax paper, craft paper. I've seen lots of different things used. So just protect your page. And then just start to add some color here. And I wanted to do a wave in particular because <clears throat> it really goes with the printable that I designed about diving deep. It's just a good illustration for me personally. I like it and quite honestly I haven't done a wave in my Bible and I've wanted to do one for quite a while and so I decided this would be a really good scripture to use for it and a really good way to get it incorporated into my Bible since I have wanted to do one for quite a while. So that is what I am doing. I'm going to scoot this up a little bit here so you can see my page there. So I am right now just using what is called Prussian Blue out of my Arteza set of watercolors. And it's just a really nice pretty base color here for my wave. I actually like it quite a bit. And you can Again, use whatever colors that you have, whatever paint that you have. There are really no rules as far as that is concerned. And don't feel like you have to go spend a ton of money on supplies, because what is important is that you are diving deep into God's Word and spending time with him. That's kind of the key here, so. Actually, this watercolor paint does dry fairly quickly, although I think I'm going to use a little bit of a heat gun on mine before I go into my next color here. And I will probably speed this up a little bit on the video so you don't have to sit and listen to my heat gun here. Again, a heat gun is not required. You can use a hair dryer if you have it on a really low setting if you like, or you can just simply wait for each layer to dry. It really doesn't take that long and you maybe don't necessarily have to let it dry between each layer either. That's kind of just a personal preference, I think. And for video purposes, I kind of wanted to just speed it up a little bit. And they're actually heat guns, heat tools are not too terribly expensive, but certainly also not a requirement. Okay, I think I want to add in what color next? Maybe maybe one of my greens. Let's try that. This is a pretty green, and this one says it is jade green, so let's just get a little bit of green in my... Oh yeah, that's kind of almost like a water, <laughs> like a, like a blue-green, so that's really nice. It kind of blends really nicely. So really the thought here is just that you want to get a few different colors in your wave to give it some nice color and movement and flow here. And you, as you can see, there are really no rules as far as you can start at the top and go down. You can start at the bottom and go up. You can start with blue. You can start with green. It doesn't really matter. You are really just spending time with God and focusing on His Word and talk to Him while you're journaling. You know, ask Him those things that you're wondering about. And as he promises right there in Jeremiah 33.3, he will answer you and speak to you and tell you those incomprehensible things that you do not know, which is mind-blowing really. So, I've got a little bit of that green. That is a really pretty green color. I like that. Okay is nice. I'm going to dry that one just a little bit here. Okay, and that's pretty dry. So let's go in 
going to go in with a little darker blue now from another one of my sets here. This is a really, really beautiful, oh, blue color. Really beautiful. Oh yeah, and it's quite a bit darker. And this color kind of has a shine to it. It is called Jungle Gym Blue, and I really like it. That is a pretty blue color, and I like that. Okay, let's get a little more of that going throughout here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get kind of some different layers of colors in here in different shades to give your wave some good depth to it, which is good. So, let's get that flowing down here. That's nice. And one thing that I really do like about watercolor paint is that you can see through it. So I can still easily read all of the rest of the words right here in my Bible. I'm not a huge fan of covering my scriptures up. Everybody can do their preference, but I personally like to be able to read it for the most part. Even though I'm journaling up here and focusing on that one, I still like to be able to usually read the rest of my scriptures. Although, my journaling Bibles, generally speaking, are not my study Bibles, but that's just my personal preference. And you do whatever your personal preference is on that. There's no right or wrong on that. Please don't, don't get, take me wrong. Okay. I am pretty happy with these colors in my wave here. Don't know if I want to add any more colors are not there besides my white. I think I'm pretty happy with the watercolor part, which surprises me that actually went faster than I thought it would, which is kind of nice. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with my white, I'm going to just use some white acrylic paint here. And this is Art Skills acrylic paint. I got it from Dollar General, guys. You can get it anywhere. And this just came in a set that has uh, six or 12 colors in it, I think. So I just want to use one of, one of my best tools here. I'm going to use my fingers. And I just want to get a little bit of the white acrylic paint onto my wave. So I'm just going to dab it on to the top right here, where it would have the foam of the wave. And so there would be foam throughout. So I'm just going to go through here and give this some depth and give it some foam, probably along the whole top part of my wave here is going to have some foam here. And what's great about using your finger on this too is that it does give it that nice texture, so don't be afraid to do that and get that texture on there. You could certainly use a brush I guess if you like. This is kind of my preference for this particular piece, this particular thing that I'm painting. I just happen to like this technique because it does give me that freedom to, <laughs> it's kind of fun really, and it just gives a nice, gives it a nice finish and you can just go through and give it some foam and it does kind of blend a little bit in with your white, with your blue paint, so that's kind of nice, and you can just give it a little bit of foam throughout your wave. Don't be afraid of it; it's going to it's going to blend in a little. 
which is nice. And just want to give it that really nice, really nice foamy wave look because waves do have a lot of foam in them. They churn around and they have a whole bunch of foam. The beach happens to be one of my favorite places to go. We go there quite frequently and we really enjoy it. And it's just, there's something about it. The ocean and it's just majesty. Just what God has done. The ocean is just so amazing. There must have been something on my finger. <laughs> I don't want to have things on my fingers when I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, let's get some foam in here. Let's get some foam in here. On my... There we go. This is just a really fun process, quite honestly. You can just work in foam wherever you like. And just have yourself a nice, pretty wave. I think I'm going to need some more acrylic paint here. So let's get some more out. There we go. So just put your paint wherever. Don't be afraid of it. You can just mush it around. I just kind of like to pat it a little bit with my finger. It just kind of gives it a nice foamy texture and foamy look to it. And I'm going to dry this a little bit with my heat gun too. So. Then I'm going to come back in here and give it another layer in some areas just to kind of boost that foamy look and the foamy color. So I just want to give it, give it some more pops of color in here. Make it a nice foamy wave. <laughs> You can go back in and give it as many coats as you like. Honestly, this is a personal preference too. I just wanted to kind of build it up a little bit on some of these places where I'm having my foam, <laughs> which I like. Maybe go a little more here. And with your illustrating Bible, if you're painting in it, if you're new painting in it, it is a little bit fibrous on the pages. And so it doesn't come out completely smooth. I mean, you can tell that the paint uh, does soak into the fiber quite a bit. But honestly, that doesn't personally bother me. That's just one of those personal preference things that if you like it, then it's okay for you. And if you don't, then you might want to paint in a different Bible. I don't know. But I personally am not bothered by it. So I actually kind of like the way the painting comes out in my illustrating Bible. I am going to need more paint, I think, up on the top of my wave. So I am going to dry this again here with my heat gun. And I've noticed also, that's pretty dry, as I'm drying it with my heat tool, that it's actually giving my acrylic paint a little bit more of texture and a little bit more of a pop, which is really, really cool too. So that's kind of a plus of using my heat, my heat gun. My heat tool on this. I want to give this top layer kind of just help it kind of blend in with my page just a little more. And I think this is going to be my last layer on this. 
And you could do a background color on this, and I thought about doing a background color, but I really just wanted to focus in on the waves, so I decided against doing a background color this time. I may do one another time, but I just wanted to get the, the focus on my wave here to focus on diving deep into God's Word this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So another time maybe I'll do a sunset or just a sky or something plain. But this time I just decided to leave it plain. Sometimes that's just really nice to leave it plain. Don't be afraid just to get in there and use some paint in, the, in your wave. Because waves have quite a bit of that white, foamy, textured look to them, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. I tell my girls sometimes when we're cooking and baking, and things and I get in there and use my hands to do things that your hands are some of the best tools God gave you so I always try and try to remember that in my journaling too sometimes it's really cool and really fun to do diff different things if you're not used to doing your things you're used to using other types of tools which is perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that but this is just a great reminder of truly the tools that God gave you. Some of them are just amazing. The things that you can do are just amazing. And it's just a really great reminder of that. And I really, really like how that turned out. Okay. So let's use a heat tool one last time here. And that can also dry a little bit as I am getting my printable ready to go on my page. So, get my paint out of the way here. I guess it doesn't matter where I put it. <laughs> okay, and my paint brushes. Okay, I really like using WordFetty. If you know anything about the way I journal, I like the big WordFetty for some reason. I don't really know why. And I wanted to keep this kind of simple and I printed my printable out on both cardstock, which this little fish is on, and I also used sticker paper, which I, I cut this diver out. I'm not for sure if I wanted to put put the diver in here on the wave or what. So I cut it out and just have it in here. And I'm going to do something with that, I think. Let's do one. I think I'm going to cut apart my word fetty here. I'm usually a big fan of that. I don't know why. Maybe just into two this time. Let's see. I like having the uh, the bigger word fetty because then you can cut it apart. You can cut down the outside of it and make it smaller like I have done here. You can keep it really big. You can just do so much with it really. I think that's part of the reason I design it the way that I do, so big, is because then you can use it really in all of your journaling Bibles, or in all of your journaling, no matter how you do it, 
but then you can just do so much with it. You can you can cut it down into your smaller word fitty size and use it that way if you like, or leave it big and go with it that way. Go deep into God's word. Jeremiah 33, 3. And this was kind of a washi piece on the printable that I created, and I going to just cut off one of the Jeremiah 33 3's on there to use and that is another thing that I really like about printables and I try to keep it in mind when I design them too is that there are so many things that you can do with them and I like having versatility in mine and so I try to keep that in mind when I use them, design them, use them in my journaling. I just, I like the versatility. There's so much stuff that you can do and I love seeing the different things that everybody comes up with when they journal. You can have one printable and, you know, a hundred people use the same one and everybody has done something different and I just think that is so amazing. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. You know what, I really like how simple that is. I really do. I was thinking about using, well what I did was I cut the bookmark out from the printable and I, I cut all of the, cut all the words off of that. I've done that before and I, and I use it in my journaling sometimes and I really love it. I just use it as word fetty. And I was thinking about using that entire thing on here, but maybe I might mix it up a little bit here. And I call to me and I will Show you great and different. There's just really I'm indecisive right now. Can you tell? Let's see. I love this whole verse here. And I think the swimmer goes well here in the wave. And I might use the little fish. I'm not for sure yet. I might just keep it really simple without the fish, but I do kind of like the fish in the corner. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Maybe just a simple call to me and I will answer you because that prompts me to go up here to the verse and read the rest and actually dive deep into God's Word, which is the whole point. I think I like that. I thought about putting the flippers on here somewhere, like maybe behind this part, which would be okay. But I really think I just like it. And I know that doesn't use a ton of the printable, but it keeps it simple and I think it uses enough to just make my page have a little bit of pop to it. Yes, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to use my glue here and glue on my words. My, oops, my glue had a a little bit of glue stuck on there from the last time I used it. Okay, so uh, this glue that I'm using is the Tombow Mono Liquid Glue, and I like it a lot. You can use anything you have. Glue sticks are perfectly fine. I just happen to really like this glue. It works really well, but so do lots of other glues and tapes. That's no big deal. Use what you have, use what you like, use what works for you. I do suggest you use uh, an archival glue of some sort. 
something that won't yellow or fade over time, which is nice. But again, there are many, many different options for adhering your printables to your page. And I certainly could have printed this out on sticker paper. Uh, you certainly can do that if you like. I guess I probably should do that. I probably should just get white sticker paper. I'm a huge fan of clear sticker paper, but then I like to have my cardstock. I just have white cardstock, which I really like. It's thicker and I think I just have some glue right there, but that's okay. You can go back in with a really good eraser usually and get some of that glue off after it dries, but Oh, on my cardstock, I guess I could get white, but I like the way that the word fitty looks on cardstock. I, I want it to stand out on my page, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. I, I, I don't want it to blend in too much with my page, with my word fitty. I, that's again just a personal preference, and that's just me, so I like my word fitty to be bright and bold and stand out from my page, not just soak into my page. <clears throat> so you will see me do that with my word fitty and again that's personal preference you do what you like and what what looks nice to you you're spending time with God and his word and that's what's important to you and you do what you enjoy and create what what you like but this just kind of gives you A little idea of what you can do and I love paint I love painting in my Bible I have really only gotten into gotten into painting in the last maybe uh, maybe close to a year now maybe a little less than that I really never was too interested in painting and I just kept seeing people in their journaling painting and I finally just decided my girls love painting and of course I got them watercolors and got them painting and stuff and then one day I was like you know what I think I need to try this painting and I had tried watercolor and I made some cards and I started painting with watercolors in my Bible and I love it it is so much fun <laughs> And I, then I started using some acrylics, and then obviously I started to use both and combine them, which is great that you can do. And I honestly just really love painting in my Bible. I love journaling of all kinds, and painting is just so much fun. If you haven't tried it in your Bible, I highly encourage you to do so. It is just so much fun. I just really enjoy painting in my Bible so much. You know what I'm going to do also? I'm going to also grab a pen here. Let's see if I have... Yeah, that color. Okay, I'm going to get this little fish. I'm not really used to covering my words, as I said before, but I think it'll be alright this time for me. I'm going to get my fish on here. Give them some glue on the back side here. <laughs> Give them quite a bit of glue. Okay, there we go. Alright. Now, let's get this guy glued in here. Okay. And if it doesn't stick perfectly, you can add more glue later. I'm getting some glue kind of stuck up there. There we go. And my diver here is actually printed on sticker paper, clear sticker paper, which I love. Love, love, love clear sticker paper. It works so well for so many things. And I just thought I wanted to be able to see my diver on this page, but I didn't want her to be too bold, I thought, which I'm hoping I 
I'm hoping I like that idea. So I'm just going to put her over the top of my wave, kind of going into the water there, and I do like it. Perfect. So you can see her, but you can also, it, she's kind of, kind of see-through-ish. You can see the wave through here, here, and I like that. And I'm going to take my, this is, these are my liner highlighters. You can use whatever kind of highlighter you want. I'm going to highlight my verse here. I have underlined it, but I also thought I would highlight it just to get it to stand out a little bit more and I like it to coordinate with my page here which is nice so I try to choose a coordinating color and that is a pretty pretty blue let's see what that one is this one is just called blue actually so there's that and I also I'm going to take my let me get my scissors out of my way. I'm going to take my micron pen. I love micron pens. They are a little pricey, but in my opinion they're worth it. I am going to kind of go around my words here and give them just a little bit of pop. Let's see. I just and they don't have to be perfect. I just kind of want to give it a little bit of art feel to it. I don't know why I have just been enjoying doing that. I kind of just trace around it not perfectly on purpose. And then I don't know, I just kind of it just kind of feels fun to me and gives it a more artistic flavor. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to do the same thing here. I just kind of go around it. Kind of messy. I just like the way that it looks. It just gives it that artsy feel to me. And I like it that way. You again do your personal preference and do it the way you like it. I like the way this looks. So I give it it kind of gives it a little more depth and dimension. I think it makes it more fun and makes the page pop and it kind of finishes off the page in my opinion. And then I'm going to take, this is a souffle pen by Sakura and I like these also. They kind of uh, dry with a little bit of texture to them and this is a nice blue color so I kind of wanted to come in here and give it a little bit of blue just around my words and it'll take a couple minutes for this to dry but I thought that would give it a nice pop of color around my words also and not just have the black kind of ties the blue in with the rest of my page here so that's kind of nice I think and that is that. I just realized I don't have my date stamp, but I'm going to date stamp this later. So, there is my page. And I really, really like that fish. That fish is cute. He needs a little bit more glue. Let's give him more some, a little bit more glue on the bottom fin here. There you go, buddy. There is my page, and I hope that my tutorial on the wave has helped you. My fish just needs to be pushed down a little bit on the glue so he dries. I hope you give this wave a try. It was really fun. I'm going to have to do another one again really soon, I think, because I really enjoyed that. And I hope this tutorial has encouraged you to dive deep yay into the word of god today don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we release new videos goodbye